Hey, welcome to the MDIS US Open Day 2021. My name is Fuadi, a senior lecturer from the School of Media and Communications, part of the School of Business and Social Science. Next to me here is my great friend, Dr. Albi. How are you, Dr. Albi, today? Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful opening, uh, <laughs> Fuadi. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Dr. Albi, and we are here, both of us, to introduce the school to you. And we hope you have a lovely Saturday morning. For those of you who have been tuning in, uh, we hope you have uh, all the necessary information, especially on the scholarship that was, was uh, highlighted earlier. Uh, please do apply. Uh, it's open now. And uh, for this discussion itself, we are live on Facebook as well as live on YouTube. If you have any in, uh, queries or any questions about the program, feel free to, to uh, post us that questions. So without further ado, let's, let's talk more about the program. Yeah. I think myself, I've been here for the last 11 years and the Sunderland program is the second program offered from the School of Media. In fact, it was uh, something which we thought should cater to the needs of the, those from the industry. Initially, we have lots and lots of all those part-timers joining in for the evening program. I think most of them are now uh, doing well in the industry. Uh, and then we introduce it to a full-time uh, subsequently a year after. All right. uh, I think it's something which we thought very useful to complement the mass media. I think mass media, according to the World Economic Forum in 2016, the, the media industry will still remain relevant until the year 2030, I suppose. Yeah. So this, this, this Sunderland program, apparently, um, focus a lot more on uh, the mass communication, uh, which includes the public relations, uh, we look into advertising, we look into production itself, uh, we look into the new media perspective as well. So I think it's a holistic program that covers all aspects of the media and communications. Yeah, what about, what about your program from the, the business school? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, one of the wonderful things about the uh, school that we have is that it's so interdisciplinary. So you'll see that the media school is integrated into the business school. The business school is integrated into the media school and the psychology school is integrated into both our schools. So there are, there are no silos existing here today. If you are a, a young person entering a business, you need to know a lot about media and communications. Yep. And if you are entering uh, media and communications yes. as well, you need to know a lot about business and about psychology. Indeed. Psychology Indeed. is so important. Yes. So that's one of the wonderful things that we have here. It's completely in interdisciplinary. There are no borders between the schools. And so you're learning and absorbing everything that you need to know to enter the world of business, exactly. to enter the world yeah. of communications. Exactly. And yeah. of course, uh, Fuadi has been very, very modest. He hasn't uh, introduced himself. So <laughs> Fuadi, please do introduce yourself. Uh, you are, uh, I've attended Fuadi's classes and the kind of positive energy that he brings to the classroom is something that uh, I wish I had before entering uh, <laughs> my profession. Fuadi, a short <laughs> introduction of yourself. Oh, that's a bit too much about me. I, I, <laughs> basically, I'm just a, a lecturer here. Uh, I, I believe in the power of media. Uh, myself, previously, uh, I was running the TV station and, of course, uh, I was doing some public relations. Um, with media and, and, and communications, I always reminded my students of their responsibility. I mean, ultimately, I mean, most of us, we, we are aware of just being entertained, yeah? Uh, usually, at the end of every movie, we just leave. We, we never even wait until the end credits. And I, I always reminded my students that, you know, we must appreciate those who uh, have done a lot of effort just to get you entertained and perhaps you understand the message that they're trying to convey within the movies. Absolutely. So for me, well, running the TV station has reminded me of, of, of the need to understand my audience. Uh, understand that the media can change society if we want to and if we know what kind of direction we should, we should kind of like push the media and, and if we have a very intelligent society, community, you know, they will understand what you, you're trying to say and then hopefully they'll be driven you know, to change their life. So for myself, I think 11 years, I've seen many success stories of my students. Uh, a couple of them are doing their PhDs. Uh, You're doing your PhD as well, right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, which is very inspiring. I mean, uh, it just shows that, uh, you know, 
it's it's really about lifelong learning, isn't it? Yes, yes. I think um, again, this is just me, but I think moving forward to about the program and how the students have benefited from this. Um, again, I, I introduced earlier about about the the students uh, usually from the industry who do who do this part time. I'm happy to know that they are actually doing well in the industry, and uh, I think some of them are actually man in management now. Uh, so, uh, I, I guess with regards to the communication part of it, I think it's key. Um, you know, here within one of the industry, we talk about public relations. Uh, I, I told my students that, you know, even lawyers need public relations officers. Uh, even medical practitioners, doctors need public relations officers. I mean, it's so easy for them to do, you know, the, the execution part of it. But to explain to the society, they still rely on media to, to kind of like justify our decision. So, Myself, I guess, I've done my part to impart whatever I think is necessary from my experience in the industry as well as my knowledge that I had. Uh, so, yeah, this is a bit about me. What about you, Dr. Albi? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a long barrel name. Uh, my name is Dr. Albi Anand Korean. Uh, but uh, students from all over uh, call me just Dr. Albi. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you as a student will, uh, will join me very, very soon. Uh, I've been featured among 30 marketing people in the world for wow. my marketing concepts. That's amazing. Uh, the most recent marketing concept that I conceived and developed was Conflict is a Marketing Tool. That has been published by Wharton Business School. And I always joke that uh, Wharton was always one of the top five schools in, uh, in the USA. But uh, after they published my concept, they are now <laughs> number one along with Howard. <laughs> So that's just a joke, of course, but uh, we're quite happy about that. So uh, the business school draws a lot from uh, the communication school. The business school draws a lot from the psychology school. And that's one of the great strengths that we have. It's completely interdisciplinary. And we have, of course, uh, later on in the program, you will uh, listen to our students who have done their uh, undergrad here as well as their postgrad. And you'll see how well they have absorbed so many of our concepts and how well they've applied it in industry. Mm. I mean, uh, if, with our introduction, it's obvious that uh, for those of you who are uncertain if, if this is the best place to go, I think with the industry experience we had and what I can share also with all my peers, right? most of my other lecturers are also from industry, uh, well qualified. So I, I guess it would gives you some assurance in that sense, you know, the credibility is there. And I think if for those of you who are still not sure, this is a living example. Okay? <laughs> for more information about who are the lecturers, you can visit our website and then they'll give you an idea of who are the lecturers uh, uh, who will be teaching some of you here in the industry. All right? Shall we now uh, go to the video of our... Shall we now... Yeah, uh, I mean... Um, that's, that's about us, but I guess if you want to know more about the program, uh, you can listen to Neil McFarland. Uh, he's one of the module leaders from the University of Sunderland faculty itself. Let's watch the video. So my name is Neil McFarlane and I am the centre leader for uh, Sunderland University in the relationship with uh, MDIS. Uh, with regards to our media degree. So the Media Culture and Communication program at Sunderland is um, devised and taught by uh, a team of world-leading academics. 60% um, of the department's research was classed as world-class in the most recent uh, research excellence framework. The degree features a mix of um, lectures, uh, seminar discussions, to um, projects working on a live brief um, that are ready for industry, uh, industry standard projects. And there's a core of critical thinking that goes through the entire teaching and the entire syllabus. So this uh, degree has been designed by world leading academics, but also uh, industry experts. And the kind of jobs that students could, go, could and do go into involve television, radio, film, um, public relations and marketing, new media online, as well as further academic study, so into the PhD routes and, and beyond. To find out more about our course, please get in touch with a program consultant and we look forward to seeing you here at MDIS. 
Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you very much on, on that insights. So I, I guess that gives another overview from the faculty perspective. And as mentioned by Neil, uh, you know, we, we, do, we do focus on a lot from whatever the industry is offering at the moment. Right? We look into something uh, which is current and relevant. So, yeah, that's what... For the, you were telling me about some of the newer concepts that uh, are, you know, that we are seeing emerging in the media industry. That's, that's of relevance to all of us, whether we are in the media or in business. Mm -hmm. So could you share some of that? Yeah, in, in one, of the, one of the modules, in fact, uh, the introduction to digital media culture as well as popular culture, uh, we look into the digital platform. Uh, we look into the virtual reality part of it. We look into augmented reality. We look into AI, artificial intelligence. Wow. Uh, we look into machine learning. All right. uh, these are some of the things that we were discussing in class. I think uh, that's very important, that's current. I think what we're doing now is what we call uh, a virtual production. All right. This is something which we are exploring. I think, uh, I'm not saying it's gone other days, but uh, you know, we used to understand that you know, in, in any production in the studio environment, you have a big setup. Or you got, huge lighting set up and, and, and a big scale and then you, you got a couple of more than 20 people involved Absolutely. but right now we just need a couple of cameras right a virtual environment and then that's it we can do live especially with social media Absolutely. right we can reach out to you know the global audience in that sense uh, i hope to reach a wider audience you know for those overseas even alaska perhaps Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. so ai is the future um I think we, we, we talk about uh, Web 3.0 and then we talk about, I think recently we have a talk about the Industry 4.0. Mm -hmm. So these are looking into augmented reality, into machine learning. So moving forward, I, be, I believe with virtual reality, this is something that uh, we should explore. Uh, so, so with artificial intelligence, I think algorithm is going to be a big thing. I think that should be incorporated within our program. Uh, what we are doing now, obviously, is live. You know, the system via you know YouTube, Facebook, or Google, they're actually calculating the number of of hits. They're looking at the words I say, you Absolutely. know, uh, the, the common words mentioned, and then for those who are searching for it, they can actually detect, and then they create another of you, right? Absolutely. And then after that, they'll say, okay, this is probably what you want in the future. So that's artificial intelligence for you. Absolutely, and all of the, all of this is so very relevant. Now, you can be in the largest multinational in the world, something like Nestle or Coca-Cola or McDonald's, and you will need to access AI tremendously in the years ahead. But let's look at it in another perspective. You could be running a small cafe, and even then, you should be capitalizing on the advantages of digital marketing and get your message across. Uh, maybe you're a, you have a small cafe in Singapore or in uh, Manila or in uh, Jakarta. Exactly. Or in Bombay yeah. or in Shanghai. Exactly. You should be using the power of digital marketing to get your message across to all your potential customers, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I think it's a very exciting. Uh, yes, future. yes, yes, exactly. I, I guess with the government uh, introduction on the infrastructure, setting up the infrastructure with five G technology and everything, I think moving forward, it is something. Uh, I'm positive about it. I'm optimistic about it. I think uh, myself, I'm just a digital migrant. I think those digital natives, in a way, they they are looking forward to such things. Uh, I think we, we we talk about the spread of 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 reach in that sense. Uh, you know, my, we, we are teaching at home, right? I mean, recently I took a course on virtual reality. I was, you know, looking through the, the Oculus, which is the, like the goggle thing. And then I, I allow my mom to experience it. I said, you want to go to Bali? I said, yeah. She said, what, where, where's Bali? We cannot fly, right? I said, look. So I put on the, the goggle for her yeah. and then she was exploring it. So she was like amazed, you know. She's like amazed. 78 years old. And she was looking, oh my goodness, what, where is this? <laughs> so again, that's the future of media. Amazing. Yes. So for instance, if we were just to, uh, you know, I'm just looking into the future. I'm just saying that maybe if you want your customer to explore your cafe, your tiny little cafe, he will be able to walk right into your cafe. Uh, he won't be able to taste the food, but he'll be able to see it. And that's something that's, that's so very, very exciting. The mm -hmm. potentials of all this is so very exciting. And I understand that uh, your students entered a competition and 
Oh, yeah. uh, did, uh, I, I think one of the other benefits of the program is it's not just learning from class environment. I mean, we always encourage our students to have more hands-on and practical part of it. And uh, I often uh, expose my students to competitions, right? competing amongst the best. And recently, we took part in the Film Cancer Society. I think in 2016, MDIS, we took part even in a 48 hours uh, short film competition. So again, uh, these students not only just learn in class, but they are exposed to, to all the industry experience, participating in competitions. And, and recently, uh, 2021, recently, this, this, I think a couple of months ago, we won the same competition. So let's watch a, another video of, 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 of my students who won the competition last year. This is the Singapore, Film Can Sorry, Singapore Cancer Society short film. Let's hear from them. Dreams change, they always change. And at the time when I decided that I wanted to do the sciences, I thought that sciences was something for me. But in the end, I decided it wasn't. And lots of people were telling me that, you know, you should just stick to the sciences because that's what you're good at. But it's not what I love. So I decided to follow something that I was more passionate about and I got the chance to test out um, some skills in the media sector and I kind of liked it so uh, I heard about the MDIS courses and I decided to come for the open day and check it out and it seemed more geared to what I was interested in and something that I wanted to try out at least you know, in the beginning so I started it and I'm quite glad that I did. It was our first module of first semester, so I was extremely nervous because I'd never taken a media module in my life. And my lecturer, Mr. Fadi, was very, um, very understanding because everybody else in the class had already been through the diploma levels and they even had him as a teacher before. So when he would explain some terminology and things during the lecture, he would pause and he would look at me and ask me like, uh, do you understand? Do you want me to um, explain a little bit more? So I felt like, you know, at least I was taken care of and I didn't feel completely um, brand new to everything because at least like I could follow the lessons um, more closely because of that. Something that every industry and every company has, they require PR and it's something that I feel that, that is very useful, please definitely try it. Because for me, I didn't have anybody to tell me that you know it was okay to sort of change fields if I wanted to, I did, and, um, it was really difficult, that's for sure, that, because it was a decision that I had to make for myself and it's something that I had to work on myself and I feel like MDIS really helped me sort of push me and um, to decide that this is really what I wanted to do and it's not just a, a whim. I'm very thankful to MD MDIS for giving me this opportunity so that I can continue to do this passion that I have. Video to share the message. Yes. Because it's only one minute video, 
we need to make everything in one minute yeah so we had to have all the content all the messages packed into a minute which i think was a bit of a challenge for us but i think we overcame that finally we made it yeah Yeah, we had these the competitors from NUS and LaSalle, so it was very prestigious competitors, but um, surprisingly, yeah. we won both categories. Yeah, we didn't expect that. So I think it's really important for us to not only um, succeed academically, but also have a digital portfolio, because when you actually enter the industry, not only do you need like a degree or good grades, but you actually need real life experience and skills. If you have any interest in media, journalism, or public relations, just join us. Yeah, and especially during these difficult times, having a degree in media communications really keeps you relevant. If you don't have any experience in media, don't worry, all of our lecturer and staff will guide you. So that was the testimonies from some of my students. I mean, if you heard what they mentioned about the, the experience in class as well, I think as I mentioned, uh, it, it's not just about the, the class environment that's important. I think for any learning experience, you, you also need to take part and, and, and you know, put some hands-on element into it. Absolutely. And by exposing Absolutely. them to the competition, right, they will be competing amongst the best. And it, it will definitely boost their morale and, and encourage you know, kind of like uh, motivation for them to do well in the industry. And I think that's very important for me Absolutely. as a lecturer. Absolutely. So uh, even Judith uh, was one of the few who was actually previously not from the media uh, qualification. And, and uh, she's one of the smartest ones that I've taught. And again, for those who are interested in the program, as I was saying, uh, as we were saying, I mean, it's not just uh, those from the, the, that met the minimum requirement, but for those of you who wants to move away from, from any uh, industry, and the media industry actually is something which is, uh, you know, maybe for consideration, as I mentioned previously with regards to the future of technologies, uh, with AI, with, with machine Absolutely. learning, all right? So these are the things that, that perhaps, you know, for your consideration. So we'll talk more about this later, but maybe we'll look, look into your perspective. Absolutely. And I think one of the wonderful things about the University of Sunderland programs is that it's not an ivory tower theoretical program, mm -hmm. whether in the media school mm -hmm. or whether in the business school. Yep. Even in the business school, the, the programs that the University of Sunderland has for the undergraduates as well as the postgraduates is very, very hands-on. We believe in learning by doing. And most of the uh, assessment is by assignments. So students are learning, okay, what's happening with Huawei right now? What are the challenges that they are facing? Mm. And what are the uh, solutions to some of those challenges? Mm -hmm. And that, we believe, is the, is the smarter, uh, quicker way to learn, to absorb new mm -hmm. ideas, mm -hmm. new concepts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's one of the very, very powerful uh, powerful ideas about the University of Sunderland uh, management programs. I think it, it also uh, goes very well with the MDIS's own philosophy yep. of always learning by doing, yes. uh, getting students to do things on their own, uh, encouraged by their teachers, of exactly. course, like Fawadi yes. and like myself. Yeah. And uh, I think you will see that in the uh, interview that we have with Darren. Darren is a very, very interesting student of ours and uh, I think you will find he, he's 35 and uh, you'll see how he talks about his uh, days in uh, the University of Sunderland MDS program. Hi Darren, it's wonderful to have you here with us this for the Saturday morning chat. Yes, good morning to you Dr. Alvi. Thanks for having me here. Welcome, welcome. And uh, there are lots of uh, students, lots of prospective students who are eager to know uh, much more about you. So I'm just going by their questions. Uh, so tell us a little about yourself, Darren. Sure. So as you all know, my name is Darren and I've um, crossed that magical number 35 where everything starts to break down. <laughs> Currently working 
Yeah, as a assistant manager in business uh, operations strategy and development in the uh, public sector at the moment, and I'm struggling between, well, not struggling, but coping between uh, co uh, maintaining my family as well as attending this um, part-time business course, this MBA course, as well as full-time work. So welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> it must be quite a challenge balancing everything, right? How do you cope with that? How do you okay. go balancing a, a taxing uh, work schedule? I mean, I'm sure yeah. that is one. Number two, of course, you have uh, a family and they definitely need your time and attention. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the MBA requires your time and attention. Absolutely. Too. I think the word trying is an understatement. So I'm practically now on my computer morning to morning. You know, like when I wake up until like past 12 midnight and then I need to cater to screaming kids in the background, my wife nagging me, have you had your dinner? And then after that, the lecturer says, oh, and your presentation is a draft due next week. So it, I think at the end of the day, it does fall down to perseverance and, you know, whether you want to get it done or not. Of course, many times I've gritted my teeth and, and just threw everything to one side and said, no, I'm just going, going to calm down. But at the end of the day, these are the challenges in life that, you have to overcome or you have to deal with, especially this level, if you want to succeed. Absolutely. I can, uh, I can completely understand, you know, that for working students, it is quite a challenge. Yeah. And of course, especially if you have a family as well, which most of your classmates, I think, uh, most of your classmates are in, to some extent, the same boat, right? I think a good, a good majority of them, but they don't have three kids. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good Singaporean. <laughs> aspiring part of the nation and uh, uh, okay uh, has it ever I mean this is just something that I've always wondered is it ever fun to be back in the classroom does it ever feel okay I, I feel I'm uh, in school again is, is oh. that is that also there the, the charm of being a school student again in a way no I would have to say so yes and no um, so most of the time, yes, I do, of course, like going back to the physical classroom. It's like a, a getaway, like a haven where I can really sit down and concentrate on what I'm meant to do. But, you know, at the same time, you know, now I guess a lot of us are yeah, getting used to this environment of working from home and having a family around you. So, uh, you know, I guess that, that that's how I'm feeling at the moment. Uh, of course, I always prefer being at a physical location yes. where in the knowledge transfer happens at, the, at its peak. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess now, yeah, I, I guess circumstance for myself is a, is a bit different. Uh, if, if maybe I was single, then I would definitely say yes. I mean, classroom is always the best, uh, the best location to be. Do Do you have any suggestions on how, uh, you know, you, if I mean, we don't know uh, how what the future really holds. Maybe there'll be a hybrid kind of uh, if if the pandemic continues for a very long time sure. around the world. Maybe there'll be a kind of hybrid kind of learning where there is some face-to-face -face and some online. Sure. Do you have any suggestions on how we can, I mean, not just uh, Sunderland or not just MDS, but everybody around the world, how can we do online learning better? What is the, is there some way, something that we are, somewhere we can all improve? Maybe I would say right now is the issue of capturing your attention, make sure that the students are really engaged in the class. So I think one of the, that's one of the, the issues that I think the key differences between, uh, let's say, uh, at home, um, studying at home and being in the physical class uh, is probably the engagement. So I think engage, the engagement part is something that I think can be probably improved on. For example, maybe interactive questions with a yes, no box or, or multiple choice answers can, can be available for them to select to, to see also at the same time whether of course, whether they're paying attention, mm. uh, whether they are grasping the, the ideas correctly. In fact, there are some other third-party tools out there that are available, like Kahoot, which I think mm. one of our lecturers has done previously, but that was in mm. class. It's not done back home. Mm. I think that making this a bit more interactive um, session would probably be an improvement I can yeah. So, um, So we need to use all the digital tools that are uh, that we have available to make it, uh, you know, vibrant, interactive, Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we're in, we're in the digital age and in the industry, yeah. everything's automated. So I think yeah. this is what we have to embrace. 
And I think one of the things I've always said is that, yes, uh, every student should have his, you know, video on. I know it's not always possible <laughs> with a family in the background, you know, but uh, actually sometimes I think it doesn't really matter if there are, you know, uh, kids bawling in the background. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is that your video is still on and you're still yeah. sort of forcing your attention on the, on the teacher. Sure. I think to me, that's not really much of the issue. I'd be more than happy to showcase my sons, my children. But I think most of the time when I'm at home, I'm only in my pair of boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if okay, this is a tough one. Sure. If you had to pick one academic concept that you learned, which sort of made you go, wow, okay, that's useful to me, or that's something I find interesting. Mm. Yeah. Which would it be? There's so many out there, but um, I know there are so many. I know, but I, I'm just going to really go back um, to the basics, really the pure basics. And I'll say maybe it's a SWOT model, it's something we've done in all levels. And if you realize that's the only one model that has been applied, can be applied in every academic level, in a diploma, degree, even now the master's level, and even the professional working level, it's really the most classic example and the best used model out there, uh, in my experience. That, that it's still being used and say that wow it's actually still been you know it's used in this program in this in this uh you know in this level and the rest is most of it's a hit, a hit and run i've learned it and that's the end but the SWOT, you hear it everywhere you go so i think that's the, probably the one that uh, i would say that that's really made me go like, absolutely amazing. i think yeah, i i think uh, i would really agree with you on that in that SWOT is uh is a very uh is a model that yes you're right, quite right it's taught very early on in the academic journey but it's something that's really valuable and uh, which uh, companies use ev need to use every day if they're not using it. Yeah. Exactly. It's a wonderful model. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, so how has the Sunderland program uh, contributed to, to you as a person, contributed to you, to you in the workplace? Sure. Apart from apart from making your life more hectic at hectic. home, etc. Et oh, I need to give this a wee think. <laughs> you know, so I think in this MBA program, it does expose you to a lot of, uh, I would say, um, theories and uh, let's say how an organ how the, how an organization really on a corporate world how how to succeed in that basically. You know, I've been I've been in the corporate world for, for years on end for more than a decade and. Uh, a lot of these are very familiar, familiar to me, but there are some areas which I've not really been exposed to, for example, maybe in manufacturing. Uh, I was in operations and I was expecting there was one module in operations management. I'll say, oh, this is going to be a breeze, a piece of cake. But turns out it's really mostly based on operations on manufacturing. And that, that was something that I was really not exposed to. I was not open up to that area. And if not for this, I would not have been open up and, and got my mind thinking of what actually goes on in the manufacturing line and actually how do factories really maximize the, out, the output and when, when you want to deliver some products that actually names what these theories. And I think this is what really opened up my, my mind which I thought that oh, I will know all this, but obviously I was not quite right. And um, every day is a learning journey for you and me. And this is absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, one of the things that we are all, uh, we're all learning is that the learning never ends. Definitely, that never ends. Yeah, and actually, for the formal learning also these days doesn't end. And I, and I'm looking forward to you doing your doctorate soon. <laughs> if MDS sponsors me, oh, by all means. <laughs> and uh, definitely, uh, you know, apart from the formal learning, of course, the informal learning, you know, continues without a stop. There's no yeah. stopping that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Darren. I'm sure that the students uh, listening in will find this very, very useful. Yeah, very. Thank, thanks a lot for having me here once again. So glad to share a few things I have. Thank you. That was Darren. And I think uh, Darren in some ways symbolizes the working student of today. He is, uh, he is somebody who uh, has a hectic life at work. <laughs> he has three children. As I said, in some of those... Uh, uh, online video learnings that we do. He is in his boxer, boxer shorts and <laughs> there, are, there are three bawling children at the back. But the wonderful thing is that I think the Sunderland MDIS program takes that all in its stride. I mean, we welcome, uh, I know it sounds uh, 
very very interesting <laughs> but we i have we have no problem if there's a child bawling in the background when you are studying the important thing is that darren is learning the swot model the important thing that is that darren is learning about uh, about operations and he's able to you know incorporate it into his work he's able to see the effects of that at work and uh, and you can also see that our style of teaching, which is also exemplified in the media school and in the psychology school and, of course, in the business school, that it's very, very interactive. It's very participative. We are not, uh, we are not putting pressure on the students to, yep. you know, we're not holding a whip and say, OK, learn this and come back. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. interacting with you. We are sharing our opinions. We are asking you your opinions. We are incorporating your opinions into the into the. Uh, way of teaching, etc. Yes, yes. So it's a very, very uh, 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 progressive way of learning. And I think that's what's contributed so much to what uh, our students have achieved. Uh, there are many of our students who are doing really, really well. Yes. I mean, uh, Reen is, uh, is, uh, is a very high flyer in, uh, she was at Procter & Gamble when I was uh, doing her dissertation with her. And now she is at HP and she's doing very, very well as well. Mm. Uh, so I, I guess with, with COVID-19 and for some parents here who are watching probably concerned, you know, how is this going to be in terms of the learning part of it? I think with virtual, uh, like what we're doing now, I think it's still similar in a way. Uh, but I think to add to what uh, Dr. Albi mentioned, that uh, the interactivity part is still there. Uh, I think as lecturers, it's our responsibility to ensure some form of interaction is there, some activities are there. So that, that again, you know, adds into the learning experience. So again, who, who's this girl again? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we have, there's a very powerful uh, principle that we mm. teach in management, which is called the lemonade principle. Mm. The lemonade principle says, when life gives you a lemon, make lemonade out of it. Mm. So when something that could be bad happens, you still take full advantage of it. If I were to give you a corporate example of that, I would say, look at Microsoft. The, uh, the pandemic happened and Microsoft has benefited from it by introducing uh, you know, new features and teams and now teams is quickly overtaking Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Similarly, I would say that we should look on, uh, nobody's saying that the pandemic is a positive development, but we should say, oh, it has made us much more aware of digital tools. It has made us use digital tools much better. It has made all of us uh, a much more digitally vibrant society. And I think that's, that's a positive. That's a huge positive and that's a huge positive for education as well. Mm -hmm. uh, from, would you like to travel from a working student to a student who is, uh, who is much, much younger, who, has, <laughs> who doesn't definitely doesn't have three children? and who is uh, not in Singapore. Uh, during the pandemic, he was traveling between Dubai and India. And we have his experiences here as well on, mm. on the record. What's his name? His name is Hem. And here we go with Hem's video. Good morning, Hem. Good morning, sir. How are you? It's wonderful to see you again. It's been some time since you did your bachelor's yes, from sir. Sunderland. Yes. Tell us a little about yourself, uh, Hem. Obviously, I know you very well, but uh, <laughs> you know there are prospective students and there are parents of prospective students who would okay. love to know you better. Of course. Uh, so my name is Hem Sevak. I am from India. So I had the uh, wonderful opportunity to study with. So. Uh, in Singapore, the the beautiful thing about um, me and doing the University of Sunderland bachelor's was it was a great experience as a whole. I mean, in just in two years, I actually got to learn so much that it actually changed the whole perspective about doing business to related. So that I started understanding everything very easily. So other than that, um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm 26 years old and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I started my this thing a little late because I have been, uh, my family business were into finance and stuff like that. So I was familiar with concepts, but learning this course actually made everything so much clear because, you know, because over there here, you know how it is. So you, 
you always have your father's uh, hand on you so so you just know everything he explains it but learning it in a in a college it actually helps a lot on it just makes everything so much smoother at the workplace yeah. very very well analyzed very well articulated as well uh, as usual i think uh, you know hem is uh, definitely one of the you know the highest scoring students we've always had and uh, as always he's analyzed it so well and articulated it so well again and hem can i ask you i know uh, there are so many different modules that you were exposed to and so many different management concepts etc cetera, etc cetera. yes sir. So which is the one that you remember most if you sir. had to just pick one okay so personally i am a big fan of marketing so so personally i am a big fan of marketing so the only modules which i felt cuz because, because uh, digital marketing is the trend of the future so we had the module called e marketing plus the normal marketing which you taught us it actually helps us understand so much better how to build a brand how there's so much thought and everything behind the logo and the slogan and you know cuz because for example a name a brand name could mean something else in different languages which could you know throw people off or you know not just make it very unattractive to them so such concepts and you know just due diligence and all of them it's just amazing as to how you know it's like from the ground level you learn how to build your brand so tomorrow if you want to start your own uh, let's say a company for example a brand it's so much easier just by these concepts especially the normal marketing and the e marketing because e marketing right now is obviously so as you know is the trend of the future so yeah for me these uh, marketing as a whole the marketing model were probably the, always the ones that you found most interesting most, yeah. because i guess it allies uh, it allies most closely with what uh, you are doing and yeah. what you want to do in the future yeah. etc correct and uh, you know one of the interesting things about him is that he was exposed and he was uh, a part of both online learning as well as face to face learning right. how was that experience so so for me personally what i would prefer is obviously uh, in person learning face to face over online because so many a times what happens is that oh, online there are obviously cuz of covid how there were a lot of zoom users there were a lot of connectivity issues that everyone was facing mm -hmm. so in those regards um you know it was a little difficult but otherwise i think online learning is actually a great experience overall because um, i think it's it's all about convenience sir. you are at, you are at your house you know you have yes. your camera on you get your break you can you know you're just at ease you're in a comfortable zone at home which i think is a better environment to learn per se but for me i think um, online learning has a disadvantage as well so because not many students are disciplined enough to sit and listen they're probably doing playing video games or something in the background while the class <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, uh, absolutely that's something that i've always said i mean you know online uh, learning does work if all the students have their videos on and you know that's something that i think really improves the online learning experience, learning experience. of course uh, we are now slowly moving out of the online learning we have, you know i mean we are almost completely now face to face most of the time but not always of course so we never are quite sure what the future holds holds you right sir no and another thing is uh, all the international students which they weren't in singapore they had no other choice but then online so yeah. so so one good thing about online is that it didn't hinder the you know studies yeah so we I always got a way to continue and absolutely. the materials given so there's a way where you can even pass on notes and materials to us online so in those regards it's actually it's very convenient so i yeah. personally yeah. feel and i think it definitely could be a thing of the future yeah Good. that's what i wanted to ask you him uh for instance i mean is it uh, something okay maybe at the undergrad level uh, students might still prefer uh, you know to be face to face and you know when they are younger etc etc 
right. maybe as as you or maybe even when you're doing a random courses uh, maybe it's much more convenient to do it just online right what do you mm-hmm. think so because i think uh, i mean for example because of covid if i can't travel to singapore and i want to do a course mm-hmm. so obviously online gives me such a good opportunity to you know, get the benefits from a foreign university while staying in my home country so yeah, yeah. so uh, i mean it's i guess it's early days yet and we are all feeling our way around this uh, digital territory but yeah. um, i remember at some level i can understand of course uh, everybody being a little apprehensive about it because it's also new but actually i can't uh, help but admit that i'm also a little excited by the whole digital medium and uh, being able to teach students who are all over the world and to have professors teaching you from all over the world it's something very 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 exciting actually and now what is the future hold for you hem what what uh, what is what is your own future map you so, were telling um, me that you're traveling to dubai tomorrow yes sir. so i was in dubai yesterday and i'm traveling to dubai again tomorrow or day after it depends so um so as you know i had a company in singapore so we are into trading of commodities so now it's the same company that we've opened up in dubai as well so and we have another office in hong kong as well so 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 i've been meaning to travel a lot for work but you know hong kong is not passing any visas right now for travelers or even for tourists or anything so in those regards i think so for future for me is uh, also as you know we are in movie production so we just released a movie as well a gujarati movie okay um on an online platform of shamaru and it was really good the response was really good it was a hit and um, so yeah so so keeping in mind how this course particularly helps me in every field that i work in so it's finance it's so so when it comes to movie making it's all about marketing so it helps me so yeah so it it actually helps me and so much better from what i've learned mm-hmm. so in those fronts so for me personally so, um so yeah finance banking and movie production is is the way to go so so very good uh, i've always said that him is one of the very remarkable young people that i've met and you know our good wishes always go with you him thank, you, so much, sir. thank you. you thank you so much for joining us today My pleasure, sir. Thank you so much. Well, it was Reen, right? Is he Reen? This was Hem. Oh, Hem. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's mentioned by Hem. Uh, it's important to remain relevant, and you know what? I think it's intriguing to you know, hear from him explaining on on how it's it's associated and relevant to the current industry. Um, similarly, with the School of Media, I think uh, we often had uh, have this. Um, um, what we call uh some form of uh reference to what's current uh, we do have our own very own industry advisory board uh which comprises of uh people industry from the industry professionals who provide advice in that sense on you know what's current what's trending and Absolutely. and i think that's i think looking at the program offered by the models offered by the sunderland program Uh, is definitely in line with what the current industry is 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 is, is in a way advocating um so yeah i mean that's also important for some of us here who are unsure if the current program is 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 uh, is relevant to the industry i think uh, you know what i've mentioned uh, hopefully you know uh, would provide some form of assurance in that sense so again i think i'm pretty sure in your business school you have your own advisory board absolutely yes? we have our own advisory boards giving you uh, giving us an uh, industry viewpoint and this is why i believe fuadi that you know the degrees that the sunderland offers the university of sunderland offers through mdis is uh, i think hem mentioned it as well he said it was like a kind of passport mm. it helps you to move from one industry to another it helps you to move from one job to another and today i think there was uh, some other student who had mentioned that it even helps you to move from one country to another <laughs> uh, 
uh, he mentioned that uh, th these were students who went uh, actually to Canada, I mean, just to be specific. Mm. And they said that a degree from uh, a good uh, UK university gave them several points uh, in the ranking for the, uh, uh, for the you know, the PR application. Oh. So, in a sense, it provides a kind of passport and uh, that's, that's wonderful to know. And I think the University of Sunderland program through MDIS yes. is, is in that sense a very pass powerful passport that you can hold and that you can give your child if you are a parent. And it, uh, it's, a lifelong, uh, it's a lifelong passport for you. It's a UK degree. Yes. It's a prestigious UK degree. Mm -hmm. It's uh, provided to you very, very professionally by MDIS. And uh, it's a very, very international. Globally cohort. recognized in that sense. Yes. And it's a wonderful mix of students. You have students from China. You have students from India. You have students from Singapore. You have students from Indonesia. Uh, Russia. Russia and, uh, you know, uh, Tashkent. And so students are learning the international experience right here in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. International experience is normally something that you would learn from a textbook. <laughs> but uh, our students, our Sunderland MDI students, are learning how to interact with uh, citizens from other countries right here in the classroom. Yep. Because they're doing their assignments together, they're doing group assignments together, they are, they're sitting in the canteen together. Even that is, uh, uh, you know, is a very uh, powerful integrated, mm. integrating factor. Mm. And I think uh, nothing illustrates this uh, better than uh, the fact that even in these three short interviews that we've had, uh, there is a Singaporean, there's somebody else who's from Dubai and India. And of course, our last interview is from Mark. Uh, Mark is from uh, Manila. And uh, he, here he is, he's talking about his experience of uh, the MDIS Sunderland program. Hi, Mark. It's good to see you. Good morning, sir. Nice to see you. Good morning. Uh, Mark, just, uh, just to introduce, I mean, obviously, I know you so well, but perhaps you can introduce yourself to all the students and all the parents of the students who are listening in on this conversation. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so good morning, everyone, students and parents. Uh, my name is Mark, and I'm uh, currently in the final term of uh, an MBA program in MDIS Singapore. And um, the um, this uh, MDIS is partnered with the University of Sunderland, um, UK. And uh, that university is rated a silver in the latest national teaching excellence framework, which recognizes its achievement for employer engagement, professional practice, academic support and excellent teaching. Um, right now, I am focused on exploring and optimizing technology and innovation to enhance the customer experience. Uh, before I became an MBA student, I work in a luxury accommodation properties and integrated resorts, um, including Marina Bay Sands, where I explored and um, received several awards in various divisions, such as food and beverage, events, uh, hotel front office. Uh, Marina Bay Sands is an icon in Singapore and notable for transforming Singapore's uh, city skyline um, with the 55 story towers and extravagant hotel rooms. Uh, I also do have a combined uh, 12 years work experience prior to my MBA in the Philippines and Singapore. I'm a um, native um, of the Philippines and is fluent speaking in English and conversational in Japanese. Thank you, Mark. I mean, I must tell the audience that Mark is a very, very organized person and everything he does is very structured and very organized. And you can yes, see sir. even when he introduces himself, he does it with a certain structure and everything. Very, very, I'm sure that helps you in your dissertation that you're doing now. Uh, yes, sir. I'm actually doing a uh, dissertation at the moment. So um, hopefully I finish it soon because, um, you know, I also want to try, like while I'm in Singapore, I also want to try um, looking for a job here. Absolutely. And I believe that uh, my MBA experience with MTIS and University of Sunderland made my caliber even much more higher uh, that's why I'm currently um, um, working on uh, the consumer attitude, more on like the consumer behavior um, in the hotel industry. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. And I think to some extent, the MBA, especially from a UK university, helps mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, it's like a passport for you in mm -hmm. the sense that you'll find that, for instance, I'm just giving you an example. Uh, there are some of our students who've gone to, for instance, to Canada, you mm -hmm. know, 
and when when they are uh, i think they told me that uh, when you apply for a pr in canada for instance there's mm-hmm. a point rating system and if you have a postgraduate degree etc from my established university you know mm-hmm. obviously uh, you you run up a higher score in the scale yeah. so i definitely look forward to hearing some good news after you finish so how many months do you have left on your dissertation mark uh, i still left uh, two more months two more months yes and my submission will be on 8th of september but i actually tried to um, submit um, earlier but then again it's going to be uh, depending on how fast i can get the the survey questionnaires because you know right now covid has actually uh, uh, brought the world into a standstill so it's uh, a little challenging to get uh, some respondents although it's also good that i, I do have a circle of friends it's actually uh, residing in singapore so i think that will uh, help me to finish it uh, quickly absolutely i think uh, in some ways the dissertation that the sunderland the university has uh, in a way sums up uh, you know the learning all the learnings that you do mm. you learn uh, of course there's a literature review so there's an academic side to it but there's mm-hmm. a very clear professional side as well you know so yes, you have to do your own research you have to do your own interviews or surveys etc and that's a very uh, a very fascinating aspect to the mba does it uh, to the mba program Yeah, I agree, sir. Um, it's it's really fascinating, you know. Um, before I I did my MBA, so you know I was curious about what's happening to the world, like um, especially on the management le- level, senior levels. But then when I started to do MBA, so I I got this different perspective on why should the managers behave like that. Some businesses tends to go up, and some is actually um, disappearing, and the some are uh, proliferating. So it's actually it really gives a fascinating uh, perspective. um to see the world in a different side so um yeah it's 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 a bit challenging in the beginning because like for me um the last time i i studied is 10 years ago and i didn't really think that i will still go back to to school but then yeah i am enjoying it sometimes i i i think that sometimes you have to do certain things you don't want to do until you figure out that you want to do it like for me it's like for at first i said no why why take mba it's like um, i can just uh, study online things like that i can figure out um things by myself but then when i started to do it like special because uh, for me i'm uh, part of the face to face um student so i see um that it's really uh, fascinating and enjoyable especially if you're learning different things one day at a time and um do you have a uh, a lecturer and professor just like um dr albi is also like um make it much more um elevated experience and uh, you know you you were exposed to so many modules and so many different uh, marketing concepts so many technology concepts so many different uh, ideas i know it's a tough uh, question to ask but if you had to just pick one particular concept management concept mm-hmm. or one management tool that you find oh wow that's interesting that's something that is uh you know that makes me excited uh, which one would uh, that be i think um it will be um operations but um maybe you're wondering if uh, why is it operations if i'm doing a master a marketing dissertation because um, um i was already exposed with operations um businesses and um practices before so that's why i'm taking uh, marketing is because i want to learn something new operations uh, because um it has everything like all businesses has its operations whether you go to you go to hotel you go um just um consulting um information technology everything has operations and i also um uh, was fascinated to learn like how um this things is related to to um finances and marketing like whatever marketing um do make sure that operations also like can handle it and um when operations is doing certain things it's also related to the finances or the financial status of the company so um i see the relations of all of those um uh what they call this um subjects or modules um yeah that's why um, one of my favorite is um operations of course it's um i think it's a plus side to have another um, module which is the um strategic management um in international context because um it gives you a broader perspective um for operations that i mentioned earlier it's only looking at the singapore or local um side of a business but then uh, the other modules which is um the um international uh, management 
gives the perspective of how other countries is doing um, operations or marketing or how they handle their finances. And also um, not to forget their innovation and um, human experience or human, uh, human resources. Absolutely, absolutely. It's such a, it gives you an all round kind of exposure to many aspects of uh, business, which uh, of course one can learn on the job. And there's no doubt that on the job mm -hmm. learning is very, very important. But to some extent, I think the Sunderland University tries to uh, bring uh, the learning as close to real world to the real world by having it's entirely assignment based, right? Yes. So, um, al although it's assignment based, um, I I I also felt the the in depth knowledge like um, most of my lecture or. Um, my professors is telling um, me whenever I do my assignments like you should do in depth, you should do critical. Absolutely. Yeah, and at first it's like, oh, what's in depth? I feel like it's already in depth. But um, for the University of Sunderland, um, pushes me um, through to dig deeper. And you know, um, it's like whatever knowledge you have, it's good to have a little bit more. So um, for me, uh, I feel like the university uh, um, helped me to do a little bit more extra in whatever things, uh, whatever thing I do. So yeah, they appreciate it a lot. Absolutely. I think uh, today it's all about going that extra mile, right? Uh, yes. You know, obviously uh, the world is uh, moving forward very, very quickly. And, uh, you know, so everybody is competing. You're competing with the whole world. Mm -hmm. Whatever product you have, whether it's a small burger that you're selling or whether it's a mobile phone, you're mm -hmm. competing with the best in the world. So you really have to put your best foot forward, go that extra mile go that last mile. I think that's something that uh, the Sunderland University MBA does teach. And I'm so proud of you, uh, Mark. Uh, you've done so many remarkable assignments. And Thanks, I think sir. all the professors are really happy with your work. And Thanks, uh, here's, here's wishing you all the very best, uh, not just in your dissertation, but in the future as well. And I'm sure that you'll do very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhi. Welcome back. It's wonderful that, uh, you know, whether you're selling a burger or whether you're selling a mobile phone or whether you're selling a car, you need a business background to tell you what to do. And the University of Sunderland program through MDIS really does an incredibly good job. I say this with great pride because I'm part of it, but I think I can be objective about it as well. And you can see that the students have voiced those opinions as well. Uh, we are not an ivory tower uh, degree. We are a very, very hands-on degree. Most of the assessment is done by uh, assignments, whether in the media school, in the psychology school, or in the business school. And it's a very, very powerful tool that uh, you possess as you go out into the world to conquer it. Right, Fuadi? Exactly. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's also about your own personal uh, endeavor in life. I guess we will provide a platform for all of you and the programs are all there for you to choose. Right? The University of Sunderland is one of the, the best program that we had to offer here in MDIS. Uh, for those of you who are still uncertain, right, feel free to contact us uh, via Facebook or YouTube or even our hotline. Yeah? Uh, thank you once again for Staying with us, watching all this, uh, we do hope you have learned a, 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 bit, a, a bit of everything here from the Business School as School of Media. Right, we hope to see you again in, in, in the next event. So on, on that note, looking you. forward to meeting you on campus soon. Bye everyone.